It is my privilege to present the following program that was inspired by the way American businesses and organizations have responded to the events of September 11th. It's part of a special series produced by Heartbeat of America called Keeping America Strong. Each program spotlights a business or organization that is helping to do exactly that, keep America strong. Having served in the United States Navy for many years, I fully appreciate the important role small and middle-sized businesses play in the very fabric of our country, and I salute the professionals who lead these companies and thus keep America strong. They are the very backbone of our free enterprise system, and today on this program, you will meet the individuals behind one such organization. I'll be back later in the program to introduce the Keeping America Strong Award. And now, Let's learn more about the organization we are honoring today. Today, the eyes and ears of the 21st century are focused on new developments, new technologies, new emerging companies. We're on the scene to bring it to you as it happens. We anchor from our new studios in Los Angeles and then go out all over America to get to the heart of the story. I'm Bert Tenzer. I'm Bella Shaw. I'm Doug Llewellyn. I'm William Shatner, and this is Heartbeat of America. Our show focuses on corporate America, its stories, its drama, its breakthroughs. We'll be going out today to report on an organization that is impacting our lives and shaping our future, an organization that truly is the heartbeat of America. In the 20th century, a group of future Americans led by William Shatner ventured out into the universe. The challenge? To take the American spirit and courage to the final frontier of man, outer space. It was an exciting time on television, but it was only a fantasy. It's the challenge to unite America and to keep our economy and our country moving forward. This has inspired Heartbeat of America to launch a special series entitled Keeping America Strong. We're exploring the very interesting story of Acoustic Emission Consulting of Sacramento, California. And John Rogers is the president of the company. He is with us today and is showing us an extraordinary new system to actually discover the presence of termites and other pests in buildings, in walls, wherever. And what's intriguing about this is that the system that you have and what do you call it? Does it have a name? Well, it's called the, the AED 2000. It's an acoustic emission instrument and it's based on a technology of, of passive detection of sound. But it really wasn't developed to find termites, was it? Not originally. We had originally developed this product for a variety of industrial uses, but we, uh, we came across an opportunity to work with the USDA back in uh, 2000, uh, fall of 2000, and we signed a cooperative research and development agreement with the USDA to modify the instrument so that it could be used for insect pest detection in, in hidden locations. Because originally you were, you, this was used to find leaks, steam leaks and pipes and things of that's, that nature, That's right? correct. It can be used for crack detection in materials or steam leaks or bearing monitoring applications such as this. So let's show exactly what it is we're talking about because the system is really pretty, it's very portable and it's, it's all right here. This is really what you see. They have the meter and, and the key is this device in your hand. That's right. What is, what is the device? Well, this probe is, a, is a, a giant phonograph needle, basically, or a stethoscope. It's a passive receiver of sound. Uh, it has amplification in it so that we amplify the sound approximately 10,000 times before it's processed by the instrumentation and before you hear it through the headphones. It's really, in effect, it's a super sensitive microphone. That's, right? that's correct. Only it's, uh, it's going to be directly uh, listening to whatever structure you have the probe attached to. Okay. And to give an example uh, of just how effective this is, we have a screw in a piece of wood here. <laughs> you know, this is, this is, you're going to be amazed by this. Show me how a, how a technician would utilize this in the field. Okay, we have various attachments that go onto this probe through a, through a threaded stud, and one of them is a very high force magnet. So, for example, if you're dealing with uh, railroad ties or uh, let's say, trees where you have to make cont intimate contact with the inside wood mm -hmm. in order to detect the insect pest, then you'll have to have something like this bolt in the wood. So this is acting as a sound waveguide to bring the sound out of the wood and up to the sensor with, with a magnetic attachment. Now to show how effective this is and how the sound carries through the wood, 
John is, I'm going to hold the headphones because they're headphones connected to this device, the meter. Um, I'm going to hold this up to our microphone. And as you just scratch the wood surface, we're going to hear it. That's right. right here. So take a listen. So I've turned this on now, and what I'm going to do is just bar barely touch this little whisker of wood. And you can hear much, how much activity you're picking up. And that's just from barely impressive. touching a whisker of wood. So that obviously if there were a termite or, or 100,000 termites in there crawling around, it would sound like a war zone through this. It definitely it? would. Yes, it sounds like popcorn going off in a popper. That's basically the, the kind of sound intensity that you get off of termites now you, feeding. You have many different kinds of probes. This is, this is kind of a, a really good one to demonstrate. But what are some of these others? For example, this one. Well, we have uh, uh, a dry contact probe. This is used for uh, operating on, on siding and, and wood trim. Uh, so this makes uh, direct contact with the wood surface and allows the sound to be communicated from the wood up into the probe. Uh, if you are trying to get on the inside of a wall, then what we'd have is the, is the magnet, again, on the probe. And we have a drill bit adapter on here, yeah. which holds the, uh, the drill bit. If we bring this piece of wood back up here again, you can see that with the drill bit inserted into the wood and the adapter, we can now go hands-free and listen to the same thing again. Well, let's, let's demonstrate again. I'm not hearing anything this time. Oh, wait a minute. You might not be hearing through the headphone, but I can... Yeah, yeah, it's definitely there. Definitely yes. Yeah, it's there. I can see the activity light flashing. Because it, it's on your meter, for right. sure. So you would insert that through, through a piece of drywall into, into the, the stud into behind. Into the wood behind, right. And that would communicate the sound back out to the sensor. So now with barely making a hole larger than a thumbtack, uh, you can basically get here behind and listen to an entire eight-foot stud without doing any substantial damage. Well, you know, this is a very intriguing demonstration, a very interesting subject. Uh, there are a number of pictures here that kind of show success stories of how this system has been used. So uh, let's try and go through some of these pictures and get you to explain to me what they are. I'm going to hold them up here so our camera can get a shot of them. And uh, just take a look. You can see the pictures right down in the monitor, John. Tell okay. me what we're looking at. All right, the, uh, the first picture shows a motorcycle seat factory in Orlando, Florida that was inspected last year. This was the first uh, application uh, of the AED 2000 by Middleton Pest Control to a, an industrial building. And the problem here was the dry wood termite uh, infestations were located in these major beams in the warehouse. And the alternative was to shut down this entire manufacturing operation for three days and fumigate the structure in order to deal with the infestation. What Middleton offered was a low impact dry wood termite control which used our AED 2000 to go in and inspect these beams, find the infestations, and then locally treat uh, the infestations without closing down the factory and without fumigation. So this was the uh, uh, first, as I said, first commercial use in a, in a factory type environment. Uh, the factory didn't have to shut down. Uh, the work was completed in about half the time that the pest control operator had estimated it would take. And the direct savings of around $7,000 occurred to the customer as a result. I was just going to say, obviously, it saved them a lot of money, right? Right. For sure. And this, what's this? The second one is an interesting project. It was the first application of uh, advanced detection technologies to a, a civil structure. This is a 300-foot railway bridge uh, in East Houston, as you can see, with... Uh, major uh, wooden truss structures supporting each end of the bridge in a metal center span. Uh, there was evidence of Formosan termite infestation from plug samples that were found in several of these uh, uh, samples. And uh, the, the railroad needed to get a better idea of what the full level of infestation or problem was on the bridge. Uh, you can see here on the top photo our instrument is being used. Here's our AD 2000. Here's our uh, probe being used with a magnetic attachment. And one of the things that made this inspection very convenient is there's a lot of metal rods holding all of these pieces of wood together. So they act as natural waveguides. So all we had to do was go up and magnetically attach uh, to these structures and listen to the wood that the, uh, the bolts and, and, 
and joining elements are going through. What's the bottom picture? Show? The bottom picture is showing a couple of workmen that are, are on, a, uh, on a lift that's suspended from a, a rail car above the, uh, the tracks uh, so that they can get to many of the wooden structures that are right underneath the rail bed itself. Okay. And now this, this is an example. This is one side of the bridge and this is looking at, down at the top side of the bridge. So here's the, the uh, railroad ties going across. All of the areas marked in red on here were found to be infested with Formos Formosan termite. Well, and uh, as you can see, it's quite extensive. Uh, here's an example of one of the four by four ties that was taken out. And you can see the coring that was done by the Formosan termites in, in this member here. So it was a very serious problem, a lot more than they realized when they first started the inspection. Uh, as a result of the inspection and the, the, the level of infestation that was found, the, the railroad company decided to replace the bridge. So here you see the concrete and steel railroad bridge going in over the original now, which is being torn down. So this entire inspection was done by a four-man crew in two days, which is phenomenal, and uh, a major safety problem was averted in the process. No kidding. And they, and they decided to build a whole new bridge. That's correct. Oh, sorry, can't see the picture. This, no. this is uh, another <laughs> example that just occurred recently. It was uh, a church in, uh, in Michigan, and they knew that they had a carpenter ant problem in this tongue and groove ceiling up here. They, were, they could see the, the frass or sawdust that the carpenter ants were pouring on the floor right. inside the church. Uh, now, they got advice that they were going to have to tear the roof apart to find that carpenter ant nest and deal with it, and they didn't want to do that. So. A local Orkin office uh, got one of our pieces of equipment, uh, probed around and found the carpenter ant nest and managed to treat it locally with uh, injection of the proper uh, pesticide and averted the, uh, the necessity of having to remove any expensive roofing material. And finally, this is, a, this is certainly another usage of this. It's right. This, this is a, a rather interesting problem. Throughout the Middle East and, and Mediterranean, there is a, a pest called the red palm weevil, which is affecting and infecting palm trees. And it's spreading from one country to the next, and there's no early detection method for this. It's generally found once the palm tree starts dying. And uh, in fact, this is a, a situation in southern Spain uh, where it, our instrument is being used to protect a UN heritage site called the Palms de Elsha. And uh, inspections are being done of palm trees to ensure that the red palm weevil doesn't get, doesn't get into them and infest them. And uh, this is a very good application for agricultural use. So I would think you're kind of surprised at the, the wide range of, of uses for this system when it's something you, you really created for an entirely different usage. That's, that's correct. It's, uh, it's been a real eye-opener to walk through this door and see how much of a need there was for this kind of detection instrumentation for hidden insect pest infestations. Amazing. We have been watching the operations of an organization which is doing its part to keep America strong, and we've been learning from its leaders about what they're doing to help move our country forward. This organization represents companies across our great nation that embody the spirit, dedication, know-how, and can-do attitude which has made America the great nation it is today. And now, let's present the Keeping America Strong Award. Now, it's my honor to present our Keeping America Strong Award to John Rogers, the president of Acoustic Commission Consulting of Sacramento, for the outstanding work his company is doing to help keep America strong. John, congratulations, and continued best wishes for success. Thank you very much, Doug, and, and uh, we appreciate it very much on behalf of all of our staff. Congratulations for earning the Keeping America Strong Award, which honors innovators and leaders like you, who are the heartbeat of America. Our thanks to retired Rear Admiral Kevin Delaney for taking part in the presentation of the Keeping America Strong Award, the award that salutes small to middle-sized organizations who are helping to move America forward. That's it for Heartbeat of America's special edition, Keeping America Strong. Now for a final word from William Shatner. Well, that's it for this edition of Heartbeat of America. I'm William Shatner. Thanks for watching.